Hello, everybody. Today is August 26th, and I'm reading from Philemon. Now, this one chapter here deals with the subject of forgiveness. It is a powerful word. In fact, if you read through this, it might be very easy for you to pass over the richness of this passage. He's identifying uh, the new relationship that can exist between a master and a servant uh, as a result of a life change through Jesus Christ, or that aspect of brotherly love that transcends all the class distinctions that there might be. Now, we are here, this is a, a, uh, an, an account um, of a, a bl the black, black market of, of slavery. It was horrible, it was rotten. There were 60 million slaves in the Roman Empire. And, uh, and yet the total population was didn't exceed 120, 100 million. So you got 60 million slaves. And um, they were, it was terrible, brutal. The, the, the way they treated them was just, just rotten. And so we had this uh, uh, Onesimus that uh, uh, Paul identifies here that was a slave belonging to Philemon. Well, what happened is that this slave had opportunity to run away, and he ran away from Philemon, and he went and got lost in the culture or in the crowd there. And, um, and it, it, it's interesting that Paul is preaching. He he attends a meeting where Paul is uh, is preaching, and he gets saved. Well, he then goes to Paul, and he introduces himself and shares with him. So. Uh, um, Onesimus is now sharing his change about how Christ has changed his life and Paul directs him to go back. He says, go back to Philemon. And, uh, and so uh, Onesimus goes back uh, to, Paul, uh, to Philemon and here's where this passage comes to life. Now look in the opening verse one, he says, Paul, he introduces himself, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, it's remarkable because re what he's really doing is he's, he's, he's kind of raising this and saying, listen, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a slave, really. You know, I, I'm, I'm a prisoner. Uh, I'm, I'm in chains. He, he's gone from talking about being an apostle. Now he's, he's declared himself uh, uh, really that he's bound to Jesus Christ. Now, going down a little bit further and verse four, it says, I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers. I love this passage of scripture because as he's addressing Philemon, he's, he's saying to him basically, listen, um, the power of just making mention of something. Sometimes we think our prayers, you know, you make that long list of all the needs of people have and, and you might get overwhelmed and think, boy, I can't, I can't uh, accommodate all of this. It's, it's getting too overwhelming. And, and yet it's that lifting just the name, making mention of somebody. Even just speaking someone's name, there's value in that. And Paul suggests here that uh, just speaking the name of somebody in prayer, that's prayer. So don't dis diminish the value of your prayers when you just speak the name of someone in the presence of a holy God who knows the situation already. And then he says, verse 5, hearing of your hope and uh, faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the knowledge of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Now he's speaking to Philemon about his life, his devotion, his commitment to Christ. And uh, verse seven, he says, for we have great joy and consolation in your joy because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you. And, and what a great reputation to be for someone to say, you know what, you have caused uh, people to be encouraged. You have brought joy to the camp. Your life, your, your testimony, your behavior, your conduct has, uh, has brought about a, 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 a consolation of love. You have, you've made a difference here. I, I, that, I would pray, would be my reputation, your reputation. Well, look at verse 17. He's, he's going to address him now pray, uh, about uh, Onesimus, and uh, he's, he's going to address this issue of what to do. Receive him back. Take this, this slave back. And he says, if you then count me a partner, receive him him as you would me. And, and Paul is saying, I want you to receive Onesimus just as you would me. Uh, as if it were me, receive me. Treat him like you would treat me. And, and he says, verse 18, but if he has wronged you or owes you anything, put it on my account. Now that's brotherly love, and that's demonstrating 
of forgiveness where he says, listen, if he's done you wrong, he's hurt you, he's harmed you, there's, there, he owes you something, then charge me for it. He's taking that responsibility. He's demonstrating the amazing quality of love. And then he says, verse 20, yes, brother, let me have joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord. I, I, I think that what we're, we're seeing here is that Paul is challenging Philemon to act on his faith. That he knows personally this uh, Onesimus had come to him. He, he got saved under his ministry. Uh, he's sending him back to Philemon. He's telling Philemon, now treat him like a brother. Uh, operate in forgiveness. And if he owes you anything, then charge it to my account. And, uh, and I think that he's just showing us in the most powerful way here that um, Christ Jesus makes a difference, that Jesus brings people together, that he can bring people together from differing social classes, that he can bring people together from different races, that he can unite people that come from entirely different backgrounds, and that there is a common ground, and that is in Jesus Christ. For me, I think that it demonstrates that we can be wronged, that people can mistreat us, uh, that they can be enemies even, and then those people can come and find Jesus. And as God has forgiven them, as Paul sent on, uh, on the, this man back to, to Philemon, that he was to, to receive him in forgiveness, that you and I also, those who've offended us, wronged us, that we have to freely, fully, absolutely forgive them and release them. That's the brotherly love. That's the full forgiveness that we extend to one another. I, I want to challenge you today because I'm sure there are people in your life that have hurt you, that have harmed you, that have wronged you. And it would be easy to separate, just to, to, to separate them and, and push them out of your life. But as this one chapter here would challenge us, that we are to operate in a new relationship between master and servant and a brotherly love that unites our hearts together that is a true demonstration of the power of the gospel, that it can take two people that have previously had a tremendous amount of pain and separation and bring us together. And this is the, this is the compelling argument of Paul, that we would receive one another in the love of Christ. Oh, I pray today, may you operate in that love that can only be generated by a genuine walk with Jesus. And may it live on the inside of your heart as we read this chapter, be reminded that we're to act just like Jesus and to extend the same kind of love to others that the Lord Jesus has extended to us.